Call it the international community, the global economy, the world of multinationals, it really doesn't matter much. It's clear we are living in a new and smaller world in which it's become increasingly important to communicate in languages other than English. Well, who has time to go to school and study Russian or Japanese or Spanish? Well, if you have a computer and the right software, you can become multilingual almost automatically. Today, we'll show you how to use foreign language software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. With me today is Martin Rice, chairman of Hyperglot. Martin, you were on our show, I guess, about five years ago, the first one we did on foreign language software. An awful lot has changed in this field since then, hasn't well, it? Well, we've just come such a long way since then in the last five years. Here, here's one example. This is a new program called Language Explorer for Kids. And this is great because you can learn in English, French, German, or Spanish. You can set whether you're beginner, advanced, intermediate, et cetera. You can pick different topics of words to learn. I'm working on fruits right now in French, and I'm almost done, and we'll finish. I see I have uh, an apple over here, which would be... La pomme. It pronounces it for me. I think these guys would go over here, these grapes. Le raisin. And the strawberry goes in here. La fraise. And I get a little reward for being a good student. This has changed a lot. I wonder how good you think it is. Can I really learn a foreign language, just me sitting with my Mac or PC? No doubt about it. Uh, now that we have so much sound because of CD-ROM, we have video on the Mac and under Windows. Uh, we have all this interactivity. Um, I think anyone who works at it can sit down with good software and actually teach themselves a foreign language. Certainly better than just reading the book, huh? Oh, absolutely. All right, today we'll look at several approaches to foreign language software, and we'll show you how to communicate in Spanish, German, Japanese, French, or Chinese using your computer. Now, one way computers are being used in language training is to teach English as a second language. We found an example at Contra Costa Community College in California. One of the most challenging aspects of learning English as a second language is the use of idiomatic expression. That's why Larry Staten worked with others at Contra Costa Community College to develop a software program called All Clear, Idioms in Context. Can you believe it? Your wedding is in two weeks, and I think I'm getting cold feet. The students in this listening and speaking class use Macintosh computers to review contextual meaning, vocabulary, and pronunciation. The computer provides a non-threatening environment where students can work at their own pace. The computer just says, ah, you're wrong, and nobody else around you knows because you've got your headphones on, you're in a little world. And if you notice, the students seem to be very locked in. It's almost like watching television, but, but even more profound, I think. Um, so they get in a world, and it's not a world where anybody is slapping their hand or telling them that they're wrong. Teachers at Contra Costa College say computers are great for attracting students to the classroom, Peel. but what really counts is the quality of the software. There is an attraction to the computer, but once the students are in the lab, we have to be very careful that we use software that, um, that that they enjoy, that uh, is at their level, that's interactive, um, that gives them hints, um, that's more than just drill and practice. And uh, fortunately, we've, there's more and more of that kind of software uh, being written and published. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. There are two ways to use foreign language software, to learn another language or to simply translate from another language. Here to show us both approaches are Martin Rice of Hyperglot and joining us Michael Takalowski of Microtax Software. Martin, a couple minutes ago I, I played with one little example here of, of uh, advanced but still simple language software, that Language Explorer program. You have something which is really powerful called Learn to Speak Spanish using CD-ROM and all the multimedia stuff. Show us how this works, Martin. Okay, so this is a complete course in 30 lessons and you can sit down knowing no Spanish at all and actually teach yourself the equivalent of a year or a year and a half 
of Spanish for, at the college level. And what we're looking at now is the first part where you get acquainted with the vocabulary for this lesson. And what happens is you click on a word up here. A la vuelta. Around the corner. And you hear it in Spanish, you hear it in English. There's a little graphic here. There's one for every word to help you uh, remember it. Uh -huh. But of course, the words aren't used in isolation like this. And uh, we also would like to uh, hear it used in a sentence. So what we can do is we can click here, here in context. La oficina de cambio está a la vuelta. And hear it used in a whole sentence. But of course, we have to say it ourselves. So what we can do is we can click down here on the record button. Mm -hmm. A la vuelta. A la vuelta. A la vuelta. A la vuelta. And we can record That's our own voices. Cool. So you're using the mic smack for you to record your own voice, then compare your own pronunciation to the teacher's pronunciation. Right, exactly. So that's where we begin. Um, then, after we've uh, learned a bit and we want to start drilling ourselves, that is, learned a bit in this lesson, we can. Welcome to Listening Skills. Click Begin to start. Try our listening skills. Now, this material we've already studied had we worked our way through the lesson. And what we do is we click here. So the teacher is going to speak Perdón. to us, and we have to recognize what she's saying. Exactly. So, Perdón. okay. So he said "perdón." We have so to figure, figure out where, where it went. would the word "perdón" make right. sense exactly. in this context. Exactly. In this case, it happens to be the first word. Uh, they usually they do come up in random, so we have to type it in, and it has to be correct, and all accents have to be in there. Mm -hmm. And if we get it correct, what happens when we hit return is "perdón, señora." Correcto. We hear a native speaker say it, and then we're told it's uh, it's correct. And it's nice you have men and women speaking. You oh, hear yeah. different approaches mm -hmm. to the language. It's not yeah. just one person. We have six different native speakers in this product. Another uh, type of exercise is our drag and match. Welcome to drag and match. So now what we're doing is we're starting to work with grammar. It tells us we want to match up a definite article with a noun. Now, where we've learned the grammar is not from reading the screen, but from this 350-page textbook. So book. it does come with a full text. Also. It does indeed. And this is where we would study the grammar. It's a lot easier to do it there. And how would you do this? You have to get the right article for the right, right. noun. Right. So it? here's a noun. and so uh, Los dolores. Exactly. And if we get it right. Correcto. Right, a little reward. On the other hand, if we uh, if we get it wrong, that would be wrong. Tiene un defecto. Okay. Right, and we can uh, we can try it again. So those are uh, two of the many many types of exercises that the program has. What what age level is it aimed at? Is this for kids or grown-ups? Yeah, not for young kids. Really, from about uh, high school mm -hmm. through adult. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks very much, Martin. Okay. Let's go from Spanish to German and join Michael over here. I guess your approach is the other one I was talking about before. It's not so much to learn to speak German, but really to do business in German, if you will, to translate from German to English or English to German, et cetera. Right. A lot of Americans feel that they don't have the time or the patience to learn a foreign language. And really what they want is tools and utilities that will help them communicate. This will be people who are working in Germany or in Latin America or France. So the languages are Spanish, French, Italian, and German. And it's for people who want to basically understand and be able to communicate. All right, let me give you a scenario here. I'm, I'm, I get a letter in the mail, and it's unfortunately from Berlin. It's written in German, and I say, help, what's this guy want? What am I supposed to do? How do I use German Assistant to solve the problem? Okay, you would open up a, a German Assistant file, and you, you'd of course need to get the file into the, into the computer. You could mm -hmm. do that by scanning it in if you have a scanner and OCR software. If you were lucky enough to get it by email, say via, via CompuServe, it would already be in there. But the most common way just type it in. Be, would be to type okay. it in. And you could type it into WordPerfect or Word or OmniPro, and we'll be able to preserve the formatting. So if you've got graphs and such in there, that you'll be able to preserve those as well. But right, so how do I turn this German letter into an English letter I can understand? Okay, we brought up German Assistant here and we can see that we have the original German on the top and our translation which hasn't begun we yet on the bottom. Yeah. So we we'll, uh, we click on a sentence and we say go ahead and translate the first sentence. And it'll turn the first sentence into and here we dear, are, dear, dear Mrs. Mrs. Duclo. Yeah. We go to the second sentence, ich schreibe Ihnen aus Berlin wegen unserer Diskussion letzte Wolke. My my German, I'm the <laughs> ideal candidate for something like okay, this so because I would really struggle sentence. so we'd say well, go ahead and translate the sentence translate two different ways, interactively or by you know, automatically. In this okay. case, we're going to be translating automatically. If so we you were just put it on autopilot and say, just translate the whole letter for me, leave me alone. Exactly. Now, interactively, we'd be saying, stop when there's a questionable word. And when you do that, 
let me change what those words might be. So, okay, you so might if the program isn't sure what's the right way to go, you being an intelligent human being with a brain could give it some context. Right. We'll see a sentence here later on that ends with a, with a very and it doesn't make sense. We'll uh -huh. say, well, we want, if we run that interactively, we'll get the choice of running very much and that'll give us a better translation. So we as the human can disambiguate some of the terms uh -huh. that are there. Uh, some of the other things that our programmers use. Right, I see in your example here, the possibility interests me and my colleague very. It doesn't sound like very good English. Right. right, so let's go down to that and... Okay, there it is. There yeah, it is, so and now when we, we say translate interactively, it'll say, okay, wh when there's an option for a couple of different words, for example, possibility, well, another option for this word might be opportunity. In different contexts, that would be better. Okay, so when the program uh, sees ambiguity, it asks you for help, basically. Right, colleague or associate, either one of those okay. will work in this context. And, and here was very, the problem. And let's say very much, because that's really what we want. And then we get a slightly different sentence, but it's a little better. This opportunity interests me and right. my associate very right. much. We have intended for a long time to work together with an American company. You can see that if we looked at the original German sentence, the word order would be substantially different. There's thousands of rules that are applied mm -hmm. each time that a sentence is run through in order to get the words correct. We also, if you have some skill in a foreign language and you just need dictionaries, verb conjugations, grammar help, we provide a whole suite of tools for uh, people as well. For example, if we looked up a uh, German verb helfen, which means to help, a lot of Americans have a tough time remembering mm -hmm. when does the word change, what are the endings supposed to be, what are all the, what's the difference between the present subjunctive, imperfect subjunctive, imperfect. So we see all the different endings, and so we provide a suite of tools for those people who already have some German background, again, or Spanish or Can Italian. Can we go in the other direction? If I have an English letter, I want to write back to this guy now, and I say translate it into German for me? Absolutely. Now what you'd want to do, of course, is start with a relatively simple English document. You'd want to be clear and not have a lot of ambiguities, sure. have very few idioms, and try to keep the sentences as straightforward yeah. and simple as possible. But yeah, if you were to do that, okay. you would successfully be able to communicate in German a foreign assistant, language. German assistant, up and back both ways. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. It seems hard enough to learn a foreign language like Spanish or German when the characters and the sounds are basically the same as in English, but what about Chinese? Well, we found software that can handle that job, too. Asian Americans are the fastest growing ethnic minority in the United States, and in California, the highest percentage are Chinese. Even though many are bilingual, over half prefer to speak in their native language. That's why Day Advertising in San Francisco specializes in developing advertising and marketing materials in Chinese. It's gotten a lot easier since Apple released its Chinese language kit. In the past, uh, with System 7.1, it was not possible to load versions of Aldous PageMaker or, or um, Nysys word processing program or Claris Works onto the computer and type into Chinese. And uh, you could only work in English. But with the addition of the Chinese language kit, it does allow those what's called native language versions of that software, Chinese language versions of PageMaker and uh, Nysys to run on the 7.1 operating system so that we have that capability to type in English and then immediately switch to Chinese and use those uh, Chinese language applications. A system called Pinyin lets you type in the way a Chinese word sounds on the Roman keyboard. The Chinese language kit converts those English alphabet characters into their Chinese language equivalents. And it even has a homonym alert to ensure that the correct Chinese character is selected. The Chinese language kit also lets you do layout and design mixing both Chinese and English. With the advent of uh, the Macintosh capabilities, uh, this has streamlined our process because now um, all of this uh, desktop publishing is done on the, on the screen as, as uh, everybody's used to doing in English, but it's now available to us in Chinese. And when corrections need to be made, they can be made right on the screen and output straight to Lino, uh, or camera-ready artwork. And what used to take maybe three or four days now takes half a day and it costs less than half as much. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Like Chinese, Japanese presents a real challenge to the language student. But thanks to digitized speech and CD-ROM technology, it seems any language can be taught on a computer these days. Here to show us language programs in Japanese and French are Peter Weissman of Bayware and Patrick Nee from Cubic Media. 
Let's start out with Power Japanese, uh, your program here, Peter. Okay. It seems an impossible task to learn Japanese. I mean, you've got the sounds, you've got the characters. It's so strange sounding. Right. Show me how I can do this with a computer and actually learn Japanese. Okay. Well, this is one of the first screens uh, in the course, and we whet your appetite for the learner by starting with some just basic phrases that everyone would kind of want to know. Mm -hmm. Ohayou gozaimasu. That's for good morning. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa is hello. Konbanwa. On this screen, you can Oyasuminasai. point and click Oyasuminasai. on a phrase till you fully under understand what is being pronounced. Oyasuminasai. So uh, you can go through Sayonara. a couple of these phrases. The emphasis on this course is not really on parroting or learning a bunch uh -huh. of canned phrases. We want you to come away with a real solid foundation in grammar, exactly. knowledge of Japanese word order. So that's kind of just a little warm-up. Just a little warm-up or preview. Where the course starts out is learning some of the basic syllables or sounds that make up the spoken part of Japanese. It turns out that there are only 46 sounds and not so quite not as so many. So it's totally overwhelming as you think going in? Exactly, for the spoken part of Japanese. Uh, so Here you the can sounds associated uh, with each of those characters. You can just click on a character, exactly, uh, and you hear the pronunciation. Uh, you can also see, if you click on a pencil icon here on the screen, we'll show you the uh, actual stroke order of each individual character so that on your own you can begin to practice your writing. Mm -hmm. That helps and reinforces your learning these principal sounds. Most people go through this part of the course and learn the syllables in about a week and a half, which really isn't too difficult. Um, from here, we jump to a different part of the course. This is after people have actually learned the syllables and characters and we're getting onto grammar and syntax. So in this animated cartoon, this is one of many animated dialogues. Oh, so now, now what are we doing here? This is not clear. Now I'm just um, clicking on uh, the character in the scene and I'm hearing a conversation take place. Okay, so we see in the, in the little balloons what the characters are saying. Right, if you use the mouse, we'll actually, actually show you the, the definition of each individual word, right? And if you click on the full stop, for the period in Japanese, you'll see the full translation. So we're at a sushi bar and they're asking what, in okay. fact, is this. This is just one example of an animated cartoon. Okay, so this is just to get me practice listening to the Japanese. Here are the pacing of the language. Looking at the Japanese characters and so on. Exactly. Right, so what do we do here? This here is more of a drill kind of exercise. You're shown a sentence in English at the top. This is our standard contract. And there's a jumble of the Japanese characters below. Uh, you're trying to arrange the characters in the proper order to convey the same so meaning. So how would I write in Japanese, this is our standard contract? Well, I'm going to do it incorrectly for the purpose of a demo, but you'll just click on it here. You can see the definitions if I want to cheat a little bit. There's the word for standard. Okay, you so double you can sort of have those definitions come up or not come up depending on how advanced you are. Exactly. You double click on it, and if you've selected the word that you want, and you come up to this writing area, snap it into place. And you save me the beginner student of having to actually write the characters. I can just paste right. them Right. You can just clip them in there. Okay. And you finish it off with a period. And if you're wrong? You're wrong. You check your answer. And here it gives me some actual feedback. Attempt number one, there were two far, few parts mm -hmm. of the sentence. You can correct your answer by actually bringing some characters out. Try it. Second attempt, I'm still incorrect. Third attempt, still incorrect. After three attempts in this kind of drill throughout yeah. many of the drills in Power Japanese, we'll show you the proper answer. Whilst we provide you with some audio reinforcement. Yeah. Peter, you say in your, in your manual on the box that in 10 or 11 weeks I can actually learn to read, speak, and write Japanese. Right. And it seems pretty difficult. How, how far along can I get? Well, we, we certainly wouldn't say you're going to be fluent uh, with, by going through Power Japanese, but you'll have very much a well beyond a survival yeah. level of Japanese. When you go to Japan, you'll feel comfortable. So like an hour a day or something like that? Hour a day, five yeah. days a week. Okay, thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you. Let's go from Japanese to French. How are you doing, Patrick? Very good. Okay, you have an interesting approach here. I know when I, I lived in Paris and had to learn French or improve my French, the best thing I found was just going to the movies in French and watching TV programs in French. And that's really what you're doing here with your program. Right. right. I found that after I studied the language for a little bit, what I wanted to do was not read a textbook anymore, but watch television programs on topics that interested me. And hear real people speaking in the real way, not just your teacher. Right, right. So I developed the video linguist, which kind of allows a student to immerse himself in the spoken language by watching real television clips from that country. All right, show me how you do this. This is the French clip, and this is a, a clip from the Tour de France. Lors de l'ascension du Galibier, Chuchuri mène la danse et passe en tête au sommet avec 35 secondes d'avance. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what this guy is saying here, right? Right, the big advantage of the computer is that we can instantly go wherever we want to want in the clip. Now, we can very easily repeat phrases if you want to hear the phrase again and again. Unlike a VCR, you don't have to search for the beginning of that phrase. Dans la descente vers Bourdoisan, la vitesse approche les 110 km h So sort of an instant replay here for the phrase I want to understand. Dans la descente right. vers Bourdoisan, la vitesse approche les 110 km h I right, suppose I still don't get it. Well, a lot of students have trouble even after hearing it a number of times because they're used to their teacher speaking slowly and clearly. Right. So we have the slow speech button. 
which is like having a teacher sitting next to the computer and repeat, repeating the exact same phrase. That phrase we just heard on the film clip. Right, but slowly and clearly. Dans la descente vers Bourdoisan, la vitesse right. approche les 110 km h That makes it very easy for the student to compare the natural French yeah. with the slow, clear French. Suppose I still don't get it. Well, a lot of students have stronger reading skills than their listening skills because they started off in a classroom with a textbook. And that student can turn on the subtitles in French so I can read it and be able to read along with it and have the visual feedback as well. Dans la descente vers Bourdoisan, la vitesse approche les 110 km h And just like movie subtitles, those will change to keep up with the dialogue. Au pied de l'ascension vers l'Alpe d'Huez. All right, suppose I still have trouble. I mean, I don't know what a particular word means. Well, rather than running to a dictionary, all you have to do is point to that word or phrase you don't understand, and this system will define it for you instantly in English. So, so you, you have a kind of hot dictionary available at all times on any word. Right, and not only single words, but also phrases of almost any length. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, you can get the meaning of that word in this context and jump back into watching the video. If you do want to see the whole phrase translated, you can choose the English subtitles and see how the same phrase would be said in your native language. Right. And of course, those subtitles will progress with the dialogue as well. That's great. I see you have a record button there. Can you actually r record and speak into the computer and compare your accent to the teacher's accent? Right, we really allow the student to interact with the system. So now he can record his voice using the sound input device that's built into all Macintoshes or on Windows machines that have the sound card. And now he can record his voice. Dans la descente vers Bourg d'Oison, la vitesse approche les 110 km h Dans la descente vers Bourg d'Oison, la vitesse approche les 110 km h And that's you, and then the teacher? Very easily compared to the teacher. Dans la descente vers Bourg d'Oison, la Or vitesse the approche video. les 110 km Dans la descente vers Bourg d'Oison, la vitesse approche les 110 km h That's great. Now, in putting the system together, I not only wanted to have all these resources there, but I wanted to help motivate the students by making it interesting and fun to play with the system. So see, in the 40 lessons that we have in the system, we cover a wide range of topics, um, from sports to food to fashion and festivals in the country. So it also allows the student to delve into the culture of the country as well. So you've got lots of different chapters you can go into. Is this the, the right, main Right, this menu is the main the menu here. here. And there's a wide range of topics, so almost anybody would be able to find a topic that they're interested in. So we have sports, there's education, cars, foods, and all that. That's pretty neat. Okay, and this is on Mac or, or Windows? Mac and Windows for French and Spanish. Video linguist. Right. Okay, thanks a lot. That's our look at foreign language software. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, the Internet will be in the spotlight at this week's NetWorld Interop show in Las Vegas. The Internet multicasting service will feed 12 hours per day of live audio and video information programming produced on-site and delivered to computers around the world via the Internet. CD-ROM maker Shannon America Incorporated says computer vandals have put the name of its company on a dangerous virus-ridden file and released it onto the Internet. The file is called CDIT.zip and claims to be a shareware utility that will convert an ordinary CD-ROM drive into a CD recordable device. Shannon says that is technically impossible and warns Internet users not to download the phony file, which can do serious damage to your hard drive. IBM has introduced PC DOS 6.3, which features integrated data compression, improved memory management, and a suite of enhanced utilities. The newest edition of PC DOS is available free for downloading on CompuServe. And WordPerfect 6.0A for Windows is now shipping. The A version was released after user complaints surfaced when version 6.0 came out last October. And the price of a Macintosh Quadra 605 has dropped by about $200. Apple announced the 16% price cut as part of its continuing effort to boost sales figures. Apple also says it will come out with a line of computer servers as part of a plan to boost its presence in the corporate market. Digital Equipment Corporation has unveiled a line of technically advanced small computer systems that pack the power of mainframes at a fraction of the cost. The digital 2100 server line is paired with clusters of Alpha AXP workstations that allow mainframe applications to be broken up and processed simultaneously. A company called Quality Care Systems in White Plains, New York, has introduced a software program that it says can help companies reduce the costs associated with workers' compensation. 
QCS CompCare monitors the care a worker is receiving, makes recommendations to eliminate unnecessary treatments, and streamlines the approval process. QCS CompCare is available in single-user DOS and Windows versions and in a network version. And if you're looking for a high-powered multimedia notebook, the Aqualine Hurricane might be for you. The latest additions to the Hurricane line feature 486DX4 CPUs, an internal CD-ROM drive, a sound chip on the motherboard, and a one megabyte graphics accelerator chip. And remember the water creature in the movie The Abyss? Well, a new book called How Did They Do It? Computer Illusion in Film and TV will tell you how they did it. Other secrets revealed in this title from Alpha Books include how Meryl Streep walked around with her head on backwards in Death Becomes Her, and the real story behind how the Pillsbury Doughboy walks and talks. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson.